I think the five pieces of Exodia are the worst design set of cards in the game. They are the first alternate win condition in Yu-Gi-Oh! and the trump cards in Solomon Modo's deck. Appearing in chapter 39 of the manga, Yugi uses Exodia to win against Seto Kaiba, who has amassed a board of blue eyes white dragons. Giving Yugi an infinite attack point monster is a great way to end this chapter in the story of the King of Games, but this is only the beginning of the Duelist Kingdom arc in the anime. To avoid the problem of having each duel devolve into a waiting game to draw Exodia, Weavall throws the pieces into the ocean. And this scene hits the nail on the head to explain why I think Exodia is so poorly designed. Moving from the manga and anime to the main game, Exodia the Forbidden One has its effect pretty much unchanged. If you assemble the five pieces in hand at the same time, you win the game. Although cards like Dark Willed Dealings will fully resolve, so all five pieces must still be in hand after the card resolves in that case which is only one of the interesting rulings surrounding Exodia. Another is that the win condition is mandatory. This feeds pretty well into the idea of there being zero counterplay to Exodia the Forbidden One, as Weevil asserted. The odds of drawing Exodia in the opening hand is in the order of magnitude of 1 in 600,000, so I will ignore that corner case for the moment. Let's assume that you go first against an Exodia deck, and have raided the side deck for some tech cards. If you activate Prohibition and declare Exodia the Forbidden One, you will still lose. Counterintuitively, the effect of Exodia is a win condition, so it will not be prevented by Prohibition. Good job, Prohibition. At least you tried. This also applies to cards which would negate the monster effect, like Divine Wrath or Gladiator Beast War Chariot which might appear to be reasonable countermeasures otherwise. The most interesting of these rulings, in my opinion, is with the lingering effect from Deck Devastation Virus. When the final piece would be drawn, it should be destroyed automatically. But instead, the win condition takes priority. So Dark World Dealings resolves completely, while Deck Devastation Virus does not. Seems inconsistent unlike draw-heavy Exodia decks. There are ways to combat the Exodia strategy, mostly by disrupting draw or search effects, with Drill and Lockbird often being the hand trap of choice. But is that really engaging gameplay? For either player? When the Exodia player is focused on drawing and searching, they are actively avoiding interaction with their opponent. Meanwhile, the non-Exodia player hopes to draw or have drawn one of the few cards in the deck or sideboard to deal with the Exodia threat. This is degenerate gameplay, again in the mathematical sense of the word, indicating a removal of depth from the gameplay experience. It creates a binary win condition as well, where if your opponent draws Exodia, you lose, but otherwise you will most likely win. It gets worse though, because Exodia decks are not exactly fast to play. Since you have to activate so many draw or search cards to assemble Exodia, the first turn can stretch on for several minutes. And now, we can return to the corner case of hard drawing Exodia in the opening hand. This is an instant victory with no counterplay at all. From a moral relativist perspective, this case is tempered by how infrequently it occurs, but I still think it is unacceptable. The game should not be determined by one random event, regardless of the odds of it occurring. That generates a terrible gameplay experience. In my opinion, Exodia should probably just be banned. But the problem with banning the card is that it has such strong brand appeal. Because the card was featured prominently during the games against Seto, it is a card deeply ingrained in both the mythology and appeal of dual monsters. Which is quite unfortunate, because the existence of the card is bad for the health of the game. I do not want this dissertation to come off as a condemnation of Kazuki Takahashi, as he could not have possibly imagined the subsequent 20 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! And the final piece of Exodia being drawn was an exciting climax to the duel. However, that is where the card's legacy should have ended. If the pieces of Exodia were prize cards, or some other variant which could not be used in a duel, this problem would have been avoided. 
That being said, it does offer an interesting case study and card game design, looking at the interaction between random elements of the game and win conditions.